Well, I promise that today's video will be shorter than that first one. We had a lot of vocabulary to kind of get through to start us off, but now that we are through that, this um, should go a lot quicker. So today we're going to look at meiosis, and we're not going to go through the detail like you probably did when you did mitosis. We're not going to go through every phase. We're just going to kind of look at an overview and just hit um, certain phases have some really important pieces to them, so we're going to look at those specifically and kind of glance over other parts. So if we just look at the definition of meiosis, this is a cell division, and the job of meiosis is to reduce your number of chromosomes, and it actually reduces the sets. So you start with two sets, and in meiosis you are going to reduce it down to just one set of chromosomes. This is going to occur in your reproductive organs. So females in your ovaries where the eggs are made and in males the testes where the sperm is made. So we're going to create sperm and egg cells and just to review the um, sperm and egg cells are haploid. So they only have 23 chromosomes in each one of those. There are two different divisions in meiosis. Now mitosis didn't have two divisions, just one. We're in meiosis because there's two, they're labeled meiosis 1, so we'll have prophase 1 and metaphase 1. That one is important to tell us which part of meiosis we're in. We'll also have meiosis 2, so metaphase 2, anaphase 2. Make sure that you, if you have to label any meiosis phases, make sure that you have the one or the two um, on there. In meiosis, we're going to start out with a diploid cell. So it is a process to reduce the number of chromosomes. So at the beginning, we start with our normal amount, a diploid cell, 2n, which means we have two sets. So we have 46 chromosomes. And we are going to end meiosis with four cells. And each one is haploid. So each one only is going to have the 23 chromosomes that we need for our sperm and egg cells. So this is just a picture, and I know that the words are blurry, but it was more the picture part here in the middle that I wanted to focus on. Um, I, I liked this picture because it's just showing you pro my meiosis 1, so it's not showing you everything. And um, you can see some, some key items here. First of all, you have the... Um, Sorry, you have these homologous chromosomes, the ones that we said for mom, from dad, that pair up. They have similar information. So they're going to be kind of lining up side by side in metaphase one. We don't have each chromosome lining up down the middle, but we have the pairs lining up in the middle. And in anaphase one, you can see that the, um, the sister chromatids don't separate. The centromere is still intact, and it's the whole chromosome that's getting pulled to the top or the bottom in this case so that we end up with two chromosomes in each one of the cells where we did have a few minutes ago we had four here now we have two in each so we've already cut our chromosomes in half um, in this very first meiosis one some key points to meiosis one the chromosomes have been doubled you could see that with the um, sorry with the um, the X shape okay remember the X shape is um, a sister chromatid, so this chromosome here is identical to this chromosome, and they are being held together by that centromere. That's already happened before meiosis one starts. We have prophase one, and this is where the homologous chromosomes are actually going to pair up and they form a tetrid. And I have a picture of that here in just a second of what a tetrid looks like. And crossing over is going to take place. Now this is definitely on your test. Crossing over is really a huge part of meiosis. And what happens is that the homologous chromosomes are actually going to exchange pieces. And you'll see that in the picture here in just a second. And this is where crossing over it increases the genetic variety. So the chances of crossing over happening in the same place every time are, are astronomically high. And so um, another reason why you and your siblings may look different, your parents, every single time they make their egg cells or their sperm cells, um, this is happening. And so crossing over is, um, you know, can just happen in different places. Not all chromosomes cross over every time. Some do and some don't. And so it, it just increases the chances that you might have some similarities, but you are going to have differences within your family. This is what a tetrid is. Um, a tetrid is, we call it a tetrid because you have the four strands, the four sister chromatids. And so that's where tetra comes from. Here's crossing over. 
and you can see that they've exchanged pieces. Now these two may not exchange pieces the next time um, the, the individual is making gametes. It does, they don't always exchange pieces every single time. But these are how the homologous, sorry, homologous chromosomes are going to separate eventually into two different cells, like right here. Da -da 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 -da. This is going to be in one cell, this chromosome is going to be in another cell, and so you're only going to get one you know, from your, from your parent. And you, yourself, are only going to pass on one of those chromosomes to your kids someday. So every cell is going to have half of the genetic information. Now, kind of running through a little bit more about um, meiosis 1, we have anaphase 1, and this is where independent assortment occurs. So when your chromosomes line up down the middle here, notice in this picture, um, they just color coded them, so you have two orange and two blue, and this is just happens to be the way they lined up so that the end result is the two orange ones in this cell and the two blue ones. It is equally, um, equally could have happened that they just lined up a little differently. It's just all in the way that those um, spindles are pulling on the chromosomes. So we have the orange and a blue one underneath it. And so when this one divides, we get the orange and the blue beside each other in the same cell and the other small orange one and big blue one over here. It, equally, those two could have happened. It's just two different ways, um, again, so that increases the genetic variety in individuals depending on which chromosomes ended up in the same cells. That's called independent assortment. It's a way of separating your um, maternal and your paternal, your mom and dad chromosomes, into your daughter cells. And then in meiosis too, not a lot that I want to go through with this one, mainly because it is um, very, very, very similar to mitosis. Now you have the two chromosomes, uh, in this case, lining up down the middle. You have the centromere getting broken and the um, sister chromatids getting pulled away from each other. So this second half of meiosis is very similar to what mitosis looks like. Some key features, the chromosomes at the beginning of meiosis II still have the sister chromatids. The chromosomes are going to line up down the middle. The sister chromatids are going to split apart in anaphase two. And again, depending on which piece of the chromosome gets pulled to which cell, that increases genetic variety. And at the end of meiosis two, you are going to have four cells. And each one of them has half the number of original chromosomes that you started with. So for humans, that would be 23.